So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, iPhone 14 plus, two months later, honest experience. Now, let me get out of the way first of all, I don't have the same thoughts I had when I first got this phone, things have changed a little bit, and some of them not so good, some of them remain similar. First of all, I gotta say, I still love the color here, this product red it just pops. Even if you're not into this and you're more into the darker lipstick red, red, true red to some people of the iPhone 13 model year or even some of the older iPhones, then this is not going to be for you. I assure you it's not orange no matter what it might look like on camera. It's just a very popping, zingy, bright, bright, bright red. I still quite like it though. Um, Honestly, giving it thought at full retail after a couple of months, this phone is still retailing at $900 and well over if you go up in the storage department. So if you do go to the Apple store, you're going to pay quite a bit for this phone. Although it may be a little bit cheaper with some carrier deals and things like that. But honestly, after a couple of months, I do think the iPhone 14 plus does feel a little bit like a ripoff by comparison to the competition especially when you consider there's phones like the Pixel 7 Pro on the market. You can also get yesteryear's 13 Pro Max with a 120 hertz panel and an extra camera lens that feels more premium, which a lot of people like to talk when they are trashing on the 14 Plus. Um, it's not all bad though. I still like a lot of things about the 14 Plus, but I do think at this price point, especially when you start going up in the storage, it's just not worth the price that is being charged by it for it. And I just can't stand by, you know, paying over a thousand for these specifications. But there is some really good things about this phone. One, I still enjoy the lighter design. Every time I pick it up, I feel like this is pretty manageable. Even though it's a huge phone, it's still got that big body, big screen, feels kind of light by comparison to the heavier Max devices with their stainless steel. So that light factor, feels pretty good and I do think if you're into a larger lighter phone this is still a good option for you if you like stuff like that so I've enjoyed that I also have been thinking about how this kind of just it just feels like a blown up iPhone 13 that's called the 14 plus um, because if you actually look at an iPhone 13 that model looks nearly identical feels nearly the same and overall just like the same phone over here is a 13. So I don't even think much about the naming scheme 14 when I'm holding this phone. Although I know it's the 14, I keep thinking 13. And I'm like, nope, that's the 14. Never mind. <laughs> you know, you kind of get them mixed up because they just feel so similar. Having the same notch and stuff like that also plays into that. But I do like the looks of the smaller cameras. These newer pro phones are just getting ridiculously large camera lenses. You could see right there, huge camera lenses on the 14 Pro and Pro Max models. These are a little smaller, a little bit cleaner looking, but I mean, it does pay off because of the results you are getting on these smartphones. Definitely like the look of the cameras here versus the stovetop Pro Max devices, but that doesn't mean they're better. They're definitely not better, but I do like the look of them. The quality though that comes from these cameras are superb. So if you are looking to get an incredible quality, you will. The deep fusion, the overall results that are you know present with this, it's incredible. Also, the 4K60, the video, really good at tracking moving subjects as well as action mode has been great. On this phone, I covered that in my earlier video, cinematic. And even the front-facing camera is quite solid as well. So I do like the camera setup. There's only one issue I keep thinking about. I just can't get over this price for 5X zoom. This is weak sauce. For this money, five times zoom for a thousand bucks, I just can't do it. Like that's just, I can't recommend that for, you know, a thousand. But if you're buying it just for a solely good camera experience, you'll definitely get it there. And I still think the 14 plus can be a great deal if you're trading in an older iPhone and you can cop this phone at half the price because you traded in a phone. I'm talking, when I speak sometimes, I'm coming from the perspective of full retail. So if I'm, I'm saying like, if you're gonna go pay the full price or even sign up for a deal where you gotta pay off the phone at the full price, still, this is a little bit up there for not having any type of Zoom. 5X is just ridiculous at this money, especially considering there's some cheap Chinese Android phones 
you know, they cost $300. They can zoom 10 times farther than this. So yeah, Apple, please throw on a little bit more zoom on the next plus model and maybe give us a smoother display. It would really make this phone far more interesting. Also consider the dynamic Island. That would also be nice as well. Two months later, I do have respect for one area of this phone. And it's one of the reasons I actually still like it. I'm not going to say I'm in love with it, but I still like it. And it's the battery. The phone on this, the battery on this is probably the best I've ever seen on any iPhone. It just lasts and lasts and lasts. Easily a two day phone if you manage your use and you're not on your phone all day long, every day. I will say eSIM support only can be a bottleneck for some people if you like the ability to switch between phones or you just don't want to switch to a digital SIM right now. That's something that can be quite annoying for some people. And I think it would have been a little bit nicer if they would have just put that on the pros for people who are in the tech right now. But they even did it on these more base 14 and 14 plus models. So eSIM is something you got to deal with here. The phone call quality on this phone has been surprisingly pretty darn good with really good reception. Obviously reception can be based on your carrier, but the modem technology in here is also very good. It just has much better reliable phone call reception and strength that you would find versus a couple of years back. So an eight plus, for example, nowhere near that good. This also gives you 5g. So do keep that in mind as well. I do have to say also this phone, you know, does offer up to 512 gigs. So there is a respectable amount of storage that you can give for it. But I went with the 128 gig. Obviously, I'm not going to pay for the 512. I just don't think it's worth it, especially at that model, because that model is going into the pro prices at that point. So I'm going with the base on this one for the channel. The display is still beautiful. It's still an OLED. And this phone's display just a couple years ago, 12 Pro Max, for example, was top of the line. You know, still smooth even though it's 60 hertz for ios ios is a smooth platform regardless and really good contrast ratios so definitely you can still enjoy your media still read you know still do whatever you need to do it's not like a 10 times worse experience it's just when you're paying this people are paying the same money and they're getting smoother experiences with brighter displays next thing i will say that's great about this is the software. Obviously iOS being the same thing you're gonna get on the Pro Max, you can get a big phone for a few hundred less than the Pro Max, which is hard to find. And if you need a phone now, you're gonna get the same essential features, but you're gonna go into camera settings, you're not gonna get the raw that you would get on that camera for the iPhone Max. So when you go to formats, you go into these settings here, you're not gonna find those raw settings but you still get a lot of other things. Like you get the photographic styles, which you can tweak your own to your own style. You like cool, warm, vibrant. There's a lot you can do and you can still download pro camera apps. If you want to be a little bit more professional, the notch on this phone still makes it kind of feel like an iPhone 13 pro max. You know, the iPhone plus in the past, the eight plus really did have more appeal i think than the 14 plus and the reason why it's not because it's a better phone clearly the 14 plus is a better phone but the difference is the maxes didn't exist now the iphone max devices they exist so they make this phone not look so good and it almost feels like this phone is just a placeholder to get you to look at the higher price phone to bring apple sales on the higher priced iphone 14 pro max i don't think that's the mission i think the mission here is to give somebody an option who doesn't want to go all out on the 14 Pro Max, but people, they can still see that this phone doesn't represent amazing value due to the fact that the 13 Pro Max can be found at a similar price and give you more for your money. As a value proposition, I don't think that Apple hit a home run with this one. I think they offered a really good iPhone here, solid specs, really good battery life, feels nice, looks nice, nice colors, nice cameras, but they, did, they cut things that really would have made this a true standout. If this would have had a smooth display and maybe a little bit more zoom on the camera, we would probably have a winner on our hands here. I'm saying it's a good phone. You know, at first I was like, this is a pretty good option, pretty, it's, the price point's a little high for this one. I, I wanna see Apple put a little more on the next version of the Plus if they bring it around to make it more attractive. Even the dynamic island is a huge deal because People look at this and they don't see anything new. And it's hard in this current market with the phones being so mature and being a bigger company like this, you know, it's not as easy to make changes because you don't want to 
scare away people who are used to what they're used to. But I think a dynamic island, a smoother display, maybe a little bit better camera setup, you know, with an extra lens and go four cameras on the next, you know, Max or Ultra device would set this up to be a far better value. But for some people, they're gonna easily overlook this and for others, they're gonna like it. They're gonna like the colors and they're gonna pick one up. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section of this video. Have you changed your thoughts about this? Have you seen it finally in person? Are you still feeling the same way you did when you first seen this phone and first seen some reviews? Let me know if you've changed your drift, changed your thoughts on this, or if you have the same opinion you had when this first came out and you're just not interested or you're gonna get one soon. I'd love to hear from you down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.